today. Alex, go ahead. Hey, Jake, how's it going? Good. How are you, Alex? Pretty good. Um, you know, you, you've been able to hear a lot lately about pundits. Like I know I've seen Mel Kuyper talking about you rising up draft boards. What does it mean for you, you know, to hear yourself in this national conversation about the NFL draft and, and how much more excited does that make you for the next level? It makes me, you know, obviously really excited. Um, it's definitely, you know, very humbling and very exciting seeing Mel Kuyper, one of the guys that you look at every single year as like the guru of the NFL draft. Um, say those things about you. Um, I mean, it's amazing and obviously very exciting. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we can just keep the momentum rolling. So. And I know you've been um, doing a lot of, you know, individual workouts and things like that, you know, getting ready for the draft. Can you kind of tell us about what that process has been like and, and, and you know, what kind of extra stuff you've been doing since the season ended? Mm -hmm. So since the season ended, I uh, went down to Adventura, Florida, which is like North Miami. Um, and trained with uh, Bomberito's performance systems. Um, I was there for two months from, you know, January 2nd till February 28th. Um, and there it was, you know, training six days a week, um, get into the facility at 6.30 a.m., wouldn't leave till between one and three every day. Um, just, you know, consistently just working out the whole entire time. Um, come in, do agility work, you do, you know, uh, football specific drills, 40 work lifts. Um, and really it was just being a full-time athlete from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Um, so that's what I've been doing over the last two months. Thank you. We'll go to Daniel Oyafusi next. Hey Jake, hope you're doing well. Uh, just, you know, media wasn't able to attend pro day. So how would you describe uh, the experience of getting to test and uh, kind of meet with uh, some of these um, NFL teams and scouts? It was amazing. I mean, we had a great showing from the NFL scouts and I, you know, obviously thanked all of them for coming and for their support. Um, and I mean, it was, you know, something that I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, you know, you, you go through, you know, every single year and you see all your friends doing this, um, you know, specifically like, you know, other running backs like Ty and um, seeing Ant Mac and Javon at the combine and stuff like that. Um, so it's just something that, you know, I've been waiting for, um, waiting for the opportunity, you know, and obviously, um, the results, you know, were something that I, you know, was very happy with, um, something that I was not surprised about and something that everybody in this building knew, but I just needed the opportunity to show. And a quick follow-up. I, I know, um, NFL teams have already started to have kind of like their virtual combine interviews. Um, ha have you spoken to any teams? And if so, can you share which ones you have spoken to? Um, I've spoken to a couple teams, um, you know, I, more today told me that they were going to, you know, reach out um, with phone calls and stuff. I mean, I talked to, I want to say 13 teams at my, you know, see a college gridiron showcase that I went to in January. Um, I have a call a little bit later today with the Rams. Um, and then, you know, from there, I, you know, I've had a couple teams from earlier today that said they're going to reach out, call just to get to know me at first and, you know, a couple others. Um, saying that, you know, they're, they're going to have Zoom sessions here soon in the next month. Reminder that if you have a question for Jake to send me a chat, we'll go to Joe Yasharoff next. Hey, Jake, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, thanks for talking to us. I yeah, um, appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Uh, take us there. Take us to the field to um, are you nervous? Are you excited? Are you in a zone? What What is it actually like? You've been waiting for this, you said. So what was it like to actually go through it? I mean, wasn't nervous. Um, really, I've known this is going to happen for years. Um, you know, a lot of people have said a lot of things about me that I knew weren't true, that everybody in this building knew weren't true. Um, and really, just out there doing what I do every day. Um, you know, and proving myself right. And just a quick follow-up, besides the measurables, what do you want NFL teams to know about Jake Funk? That they're going to get a hardworking kid, that they're going to get somebody who's going to give it everything he has at all times and somebody who's, who understands how to compete and what it's like to take advantage of every single opportunity they get because I've had to do that my whole career here. Thank you. Is there anything else for Jake? Can I get another one in? Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, Jake. I mean, I know, I know you mentioned, you know, this is something that you've always envisioned and, you know, you, you anticipated it happening. Um, but we all know you've been through so much um, in your Maryland career with the injuries and whatnot. I mean, even through those grueling rehab process, processes, was it still something that was on your mind? I know you just wanted to get back to the, to the field at Maryland, but um, this opportunity right here, is that still something that you always kept in your mind? Yeah, always. Um, just because, you know, every single day I competed, competed with an NFL running back room since the day I got here. Um, from Trey Edmonds, my freshman year, to Ty Johnson, to Anthony McFarlane, to Lorenzo Harrison, to Javon Leak, to Tayon Fleet Davis, everybody that I've competed with and just watched throughout the whole process go through it. So, I mean, yeah, I would definitely say that. I have one more. Um, so would you say that you have a chip on your shoulder based on what people have said? based on coming off injuries, based on, you know, your whole life, would you say you have a chip on your shoulder? And is that a good thing? Of course. I mean, you know, I have, you know, articles up in my you know room from people who are in this uh, call right now all the time um, about who I was as a high school kid, you know, you know, just, you know, everything. I mean, I've been told I'm not good enough since the day I got here. I've been told I'm not good enough as a high school kid. I've been told I'm not good enough every single year and I'm just proving myself right. That's all I'm doing. Thank you. We'll go to Wes Brown. Hey Jake. Um, so you, you obviously talk about the, the, the circumstances you've sort of been through, you know, with, with your career, you know, you've had the injuries as well and, you know, competing in, in a really tough running back room. Also talking about this season with, you know, COVID, how has that sort of impacted, I guess, your final season and then training up until, until pro day? I mean, COVID definitely impacted the season. Obviously, we only got five games in. I had to miss one of those games because I got COVID. Um, and I mean, really, you know, I have my own personal views on how the Big Ten handled it. But I mean, at the end of the day, we were able to get some games in. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, like I said earlier about taking advantage of every single opportunity you get, that's something that I had to do. Um, because, you know, obviously my game tape of being a starting running back here at this university got cut short because of COVID. Um, so it's something that I, every single day, just, you know, had to, you know, take advantage of, but in terms of training, I was down in Florida and, you know, we didn't skip a beat down there. Um, had zero COVID cases the whole time I was there, um, you know, and really just appreciated everything that, you know, they did for me down there. So and then sort of looking forward, um, you, you, you talk a little bit about, you know, setting up Zoom, setting up calls. What's the next, you know, phase for you moving forward? What's sort of the plan, you know, in terms of getting ready, I guess, for, for draft day? Um, so the next phase is you got Zoom calls, you got medical evaluations, you got private workouts with teams if they want to, you know, send a coach down to come see you and work you out. Um, you got like I just just interviews, workouts, medical exams, all leading up to the uh, to the draft. I, I you know I can guarantee I'm gonna go through the rudder when it comes to medical exams. But um, yeah, the, those three big things. We'll go to a Meg Gafir. Hey Jake, uh, you mentioned you know you're uh, taking advantage of kind of every opportunity and and how you kind of went through the season. Um, taking advantage of every moment and just kind of with this whole process, just being very unique. And you mentioned we're, you know, watching guys like Ty and Ant and kind of all of them go through this process. Have they kind of shed any light on maybe, you know, maybe how to best capitalize, how to best maximize your available time kind of preparing mm -hmm. up to this and maybe have they kind of shed any light on how to prepare yourself when you're uh, speaking with these NFL teams? Yeah. I mean, I've Ty is my best friend. Um, so I've pretty much lived through this, through Ty for two years now, understanding, you know, the day-to-day -day life of an NFL running back, um, the process leading up to the draft, um, everything about it, I've known for years. I've known since 2018 when he went through it. So it, for me, it's just, it was just waiting for the, the right time to showcase. And I, I, you know, and I thank God and I thank a lot of individuals in my life that have helped me along the way. And, you know, the timing is just right. Go back to Daniel. Hey, Jake. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you don't mind sharing, because we, we weren't there. I mean, what did you run in the 40 time? And is it what you, um, or what were you told you ran in the 40 time? And is it what you expected? 
So the fastest time I ran on a clock that I've heard is a four, four, three. Um, and then, you know, I've heard anything from a four, four, three to a four, four, eight at a 38 inch vertical at a 10, two broad bench, 22 reps. Um, don't know what I ran on the shuttles, but those, I'll find those out later on today. Um, but literally couldn't have shown any better. We'll go back to Alex. Hey, Jake, you touched on this a little bit. Um, you were talking about it. Um, but, you know, when you were growing up as a kid, I think you did grow up in Damascus, right? I know you yeah. went to high school there. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, when you're growing up as a kid uh, in Damascus, um, what, what was kind of going through your mind then? Did you have that dream of going to the NFL at that age? You know, just kind of take me in the mindset of when you were growing up, just kind of, you know, the dreams that you had and what you thought about back then. Oh, of course. I mean, ever since I was a kid, um, it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, you know, I remember running around the house with a Redskins helmet at the time. Um, and, you know, always like looking up to my dad. My dad played at Penn State back in the late 70s, early 80s. So growing up, I always wanted to be like him. I wanted to play at the highest level, I wanted to play football, college football. Um, you know, grew up telling them I was going to play in the NFL. Um, you know, obviously as a kid, you, you know, those are just dreams at the time. And really, you know, as I've gone through the process, you know, everything is just kind of been, you know, doing its thing and where, you know, I checked the box when I was eight, 17, 18 years old, playing at the highest level um, of college, playing in the Big Ten. And now really, you know, just moving on to the next box. And that's, you know, playing in the NFL, which is ultimately my, my you know, my dream as an eight-year-old kid. So. so that was the other question I had. Did you grow up a, a Washington fan then and not a Ravens fan? Yeah, uh, gr I mean, grew up, I mean, I didn't really grow up a NFL fan per se, um, but we obviously had Redskins stuff in my house just because of the hometown team. Um, you know, my little brother, you know, became more of a Ravens fan as we, you know, grew a older. Um, but me personally, I've never been a diehard anything fan in terms of NFL. I was more of like a college football fan. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just, you know, root for the, the football team now. Um, and the Ravens bet just because of the hometown team. One last follow-up for me. You, you know, you went to Damascus, you played here at Maryland, your whole life you've been here in Maryland. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you did get that call from the Ravens or, or Washington or even, you know, a closer team like the Eagles or something, would that be, you know, something that you would be happy about? Obviously, you're going to be happy about any team, but would that be, you know, good to stay home? Uh, I mean, yeah, it would be awesome. I mean, any, if, you know, one of those teams call me, I'd be really excited. Obviously you got to get to stay home and you got a support network here that is able to come, you know, watch you play and this and that, but really at the end of the day, um, any team that, you know, calls me is a truly a blessing because I, you know, it's come, I've come a long way to get to where I am. Um, and, you know, I'm very humbled and just, you know, thankful for the opportunity. Thanks again, Jake.